Well, for years now, police reform has been at the forefront of conversations in this country. Part of the discussion surrounds making changes that could improve the quality of life for black Americans. Our Sean Delancey takes us inside Metro and tells us the stories of black officers using their positions to connect with diverse communities. Unique Duro grew up playing at Lorenzi Park. She grew up playing tennis behind these fences. The Andre Agassi Boys and Girls Club, where her dad worked on the historic West Side. I actually have like lifelong friends, and my coach. I still actually talk to her. So now like, she wears a badge yeah, for the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. It's still weird to me that I'm in this position. She has patrolled the streets in her five and a half years at the department, but now she's a recruiter, bringing testing and training opportunities to the West Side, a heavily black populated area of the Las Vegas Valley. She says it's important to go to the diverse communities for recruitment to ensure the department reflects one of the most diverse cities in the country. It just kind of shows people that we are trying to break down the barriers and bridge that gap because we need to. It shows, so for me, it's like, okay, she can do it. She's okay. I, I know her. At the end of the day, this uniform and this badge comes off and I'm just a regular person. <laughs> Duro says that familiarity, that connection, is critical in crime fighting and recruitment, especially when the kids are watching. You go on calls and they're like, oh, she looks like me, I want to be a police officer one day. It's super impactful. But once those kids grow up, just like Duro did, they've got to be trained. We get them from the day they go into the academy. Captain Kurt McKenzie has that job. He says a comfort level comes from looking like the force you're trying to join. Law enforcement across the country is, is, a, is, a, is a, white do, a white male dominated um, field. So when you have a police officer that is, you know, reach a level of, of a captain or even higher and they are and they look like you, it makes it like, man, well, I can do that as well. The captain says recruitment and development helps foster connections with the black community that develop beyond skin color to culture and experience. I know what it's like to be in their in their shoes. I've walked in their shoes before. Just because, like now that I'm a police officer, that doesn't mean I've never walked in their shoes. So that's the important part of it. It goes past skin color. Duro says her goal is to recruit universally, but she deeply wants more black women to enter policing. She's got a message for little girls of color like she once was. If this is something that you really want to do, nothing can stop you. If you're passionate about becoming a police officer and then eventually, of course, moving up the chain, nothing will stop you because you are powerful. You are more powerful than you know. Now, Duro's next pop-up testing session is coming up soon. It's the 18th over at Del Sol High School. Walk-ups are welcome, and you can take the written and physical exams all at the same time. At Metro Headquarters, I'm Sean Delancey. And Sean Delancey also had a chance to speak with North Las Vegas Police, and they agree it's important for a police department to reflect the race and culture of the neighborhoods they patrol. But to have the best relationship possible between police and the public, Officer Michael Harris says it's important to show respect. The color of somebody's skin isn't really something I've seen as a, a huge um, cause and effect um, for the way policing is today. Um, it's just a matter of mutual respect, and if we respect folks and, and, and receive respect uh, in return, I think everybody's happy. Officer Harris says compliance is key and it's important to follow an officer's instructions.